So we've used git so far as a single user with a single working directory and that's useful already such that you have in your own projects backup copies of previous snapshots. But if you want to use git in a team then everyone will have their own working directory. Not only a working directory, everyone will actually have their own repository. But these repositories need to be linked with each other and we need operations in order to move new commits from one repository to another one so everyone can have eventually the same uh, view of the project. Often there is a dedicated repository to which everyone can uh, push their latest versions and uh, pull their uh, the latest updates and then you have a sort of star-shaped topology uh, but you can also have a more peer-to-peer -peer exchange. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go for all communication via this central repository. You can also directly pull from individuals if they make their repositories readable to you. The way you get started is usually a first user initializes a repository. This is often in this star topology the central one and then everyone else uses the git clone command and provides the git clone command with either a file path if they are on the same file server or uh, with a url if some form of remote access is involved of the other repository and what git clone then does is it creates a local repository and then it executes a uh, git fetch command to copy everything that's in the other repository over into that repository and then it switches to the branch that it has fetched over. Uh, git also has a um, list of remote repositories to which a nickname can be assigned such that you don't have to refer to the remote repository only via these long URLs and then in future uh, you can use commands without um, the, the long URLs. Uh, there's, if you use git clone then the, the repository from which you have originally cloned from it will be referred to by the nickname origin. So then if you for example use git pull origin then git knows that you want to pull the latest changes from the repository that you originally cloned from. The URLs here, uh, you can see there's different URL schemes and there are different uh, protocols supported. So you can refer to a repository just as a path name, uh, but you can also run a Git server process and that server process then speaks the Git protocol. I will show you later a way of just publishing a Git repository on a website as a set of static files and then you can uh, refer to a set set of static files in a web uh, in a on a web server using the HTTP uh, scheme or similar to what we had with a uh, subversion you can also tunnel the git protocol over SSH and this is the uh, one of the most common ways uh, if there is an easy way for you to uh, establish SSH connectivity to a repository on another computer. Um, the normal um, collaborative uh, verbs that you need, as we've already seen, uh, a git commit only moves something into your own uh, local repository. If you now want to push it over to another repository to which you have write access, then there is the git push command that moves your latest commits to the other repository. Likewise, you can use git pull to get the latest um, branch heads uh, from the other repository back into your own. Uh, actually, only moving the branch heads over, this is the git fetch command. Git pull executes first a git fetch to get the commits over from one repository to another. And then it executes a git merge in order to merge the latest version from the remote repository into your own working directory. So if you do git pull, the information goes all the way from here to here.
So a practical example of a Git clone uh, might be uh, and if I use SSH, if I am logged into, for example, the um, the MCS Linux uh, remote access server that the computer laboratory operates for you, then this is my SSH identity. And then uh, from the repository in this working directory, I can make on my laptop, for example, a new clone where then can also work. A Git repository doesn't necessarily have to be just a .git subdirectory of a working directory. You can also create a so-called bare repository. That's a repository that stands on, it, on its own, that doesn't have any working directory associated with it. And it has the advantage that A, it saves space. There are no unnecessary files lying around if you want only a repository. Uh, but also uh, the a bare repository doesn't have to worry in what uh, state, in what branch a working directory has been uh, switched to at the moment. And that makes it easier to um, push into a bare repository because if you push into a repository that's currently being used, then Git is a little bit careful that you're not pushing onto a branch into which the associated working directory is currently switched. Otherwise, the head might change under the user's feet and of that branch, and that would then cause confusion. So a bare repository is the form of repository commonly used if you have this central shared repository to which everyone can push and from which everyone can pull if you have this star topology. Um, I mentioned already that pull is really a combination of just a uh, git fetch, the actual operation of moving information from a remote repository into your own and followed by a merge. Uh, and git push is the opposite of a fetch. You provide a branch head and you push that branch head over to the other side. With git remote, you get a list of all these nicknames of remote repositories. Um, with minus V, it also shows you the URLs. And there are um, remote repositories that have been set up for uh, tracking such that automatically whatever happens at the other repository whenever you do uh, a git pull gets uh, merged into your own repository. So uh, git clone does this setting up for you, but if you add other repositories, uh, you may uh, be asked questions about which branch on the other repository you actually want to track. Colleagues have asked me to insert a slide about uh, proper behavior in, uh, in uh, version control systems. If you operate in a larger team, uh, there exists a, a bit of an etiquette to, to make sure you keep the entire repository uh, nice and easy to navigate for other users. And the sort of um, rules I've summarized here is, firstly, it's good style that before you do any kind of commit, you have another review of what you're about to commit. And that's what the uh, git or the, uh, the diff command or the uh, git diff staged command uh, does it. Or even better in the case of git, the git add minus p command, where you can review every single line before it gets into the staging area. Um, <clears throat> because quite often, you make temporary changes, for example, you add somewhere some print commands to temporarily uh, create some debug output, and uh, you want to remove those quite quickly again, um, if they were really just meant as a, as a temporary test, and they shouldn't really go into the repository because they will just annoy other team members, and carefully looking for the diffs helps you to spot search things. Um, also provide a useful uh, commit message. Um, explain exactly what you did. Is this complete? Is it just a 
bug fix or is it a new functionality be specific in what you do so don't just say this is a bug fix say which bug have you fixed uh, there may be for example issue trackers uh, databases of bugs that people have submitted the bug may have a unique identifier a bug number so mention what the bug number is if you change some api mention the name of the function give a brief explanation of why you did this because these um, commit messages are how other team members uh, may want to stay up to date on what has been happening to the code there's a format convention in git that you should start a commit message with a one line summary followed by an empty line followed by all the details and then some of the tools will only show you the one line summary and will have another mode for optionally showing you the full commit message um, <clears throat> try to make sure that you don't commit unrelated uh, things in the same commit because some people may want to later undo or merge into a separate branch one of your changes so as i mentioned if you fix some spelling mistake and you add a new command line option that's really something that should go into two separate commits um, because someone may want to remove the new command line options later but may want to keep these spelling fixes uh, likewise if for example you add a new command line option to a tool uh, make sure that you also update in the same commit ideally the documentation the test cases build scripts whatever else needs changing such that you get everything related to that one change in one single commit so it's a kind of all or nothing um, try to leave the repository in a usable and consistent state so uh, test first whether the software at least still compiles whether it runs basic tests um, otherwise it's quite uh, disheartening if you do a git pull and then everything breaks and you first have to debug other people's mistakes also uh, i normally recommend that you put into a repository only human edited files ideally human readable files where humans directly make changes and i try to avoid in repositories compiler output because compiler output is usually binary so the diffs will not look very interesting and also it can be recreated anyway you should include the scripts that call the compiler such that this is all strictly reproducible we're going to talk in some of the next videos about useful tools to do this um, but uh, you create a lot of churn in the uh, continuous uh, replacement of files without much uh, usual changes um, if you add compiler output so if you carefully want to archive the compiler output that for example went to a customer or so um, that may be a good reason to have a separate binary only repository I mentioned briefly that you can uh, publish a git repository as just a set of static files via http uh, you can use that if you have access to a file server somewhere that also provides its file space as part of a web space so for example here in cambridge if you are a user of the a student run computing facility you can create in your home directory a subdirectory public html and any file that you put in there will become visible on the world wide web under this url which has your username as part of the host name so if you have such a system you can create inside this public html a bare repository and that bare repository on its own is not yet suited for remote access via git because it lacks a couple of index files that normally a git server would maintain in order to allow other git processes to quickly find the commits that they want to download um, but there exists a um, command git update server info uh, that if you run this command 
uh, then it will update these index files and with these index files uh, updated after each uh, commit or after each uh, push into this repository, uh, then it becomes efficiently accessible. In order to make sure that this git update server info script is called automatically, you can make use of something called hook scripts. If you go inside this repository, you will find there's a subdirectory hooks and in there you will find a couple of example files dot sample of uh, hook scripts that get called by um, the git process in different stages of its processing. In particular, there is a post update hook. If that a name of that script exists, um, then it will be called each time after the repository has been updated. And there is a sample file. If you remove the dot sample, I've used here the brace expansion to get this move from dot sample into the file name where there is dot sample is replaced with the entry string nicely into a single line. Um, if you have here a post update script that just calls git update server, then these index files will automatically be updated each time. So this is how you make a uh, static uh, file repository that can be efficiently used. And you can then access this with git clone and my personal host name here and the root directory of that, repos of that repository. That concludes what I wanted to say about Git. Uh, Git is a very sophisticated and complex tool. I hope I've given you some of the most important concepts and buzzwords, but uh, to actually use it, you will actually have to use it in order to become uh, familiar with it. And um, there is a tutorial available as part of the man pages that you can read, which gives you a similar perhaps somewhat deeper uh, introduction than I gave here. Um, there is a user manual available. Um, there's a, a book available. Uh, the website of the book also has all the man pages nicely formatted as a website. And I've listed here a couple of short articles that um, nicely explain in a graphical fashion uh, some of the core concepts. How does a rebase work? How does a merge work?